the short, short biography of Jesus. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the book of Romans, the letter to the churches of Rome by the Apostle Paul, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Paul, a servant, a slave of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship, to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord, Jesus Christ. You might be surprised that as we study the origins, the nativity stories of Jesus Christ, that we begin here with an opening salutation of a letter written by a man who may or may not have been a contemporary of Jesus, was near, uh, probably what may be a child or a, a young teenager at the time of Jesus' death. As far as we know, the Apostle Paul and Jesus never met face to face in flesh. Paul is giving his greeting here to churches of Rome. There's a diverse number of house churches that Paul is speaking to, and he's giving his declaration of faith that seems to be based on some kind of statement that the churches of Rome would recognize that was kind of a concise expression of who Jesus Christ is. And you notice how little it really tells us about the life of Jesus Christ. Here, the Apostle Paul is the earliest writer of the life story of Jesus, and he's by far the shortest in his summation of the faith, that Christ was born according to the flesh, that he was promised beforehand by the promise of scriptures, that he descended from David, and that he has been declared by God, the Son of God, through the power of the Spirit of holiness according to the resurrection. That we find in the Apostle Paul that he seems to express the belief that Jesus was, at the very least, God's agent to bring about the gospel to the Gentiles. So what details do we get? in the life story here, the origins of Jesus. Well, somehow he's a descendant of King David. And he came the way everyone else arrives as human beings. According to the flesh is the phrase that Paul uses, and he uses it fairly often in his expression of Jesus's life, that he was a human being, but he has been made divine through the resurrection. The resurrection proves that he was God's agent, or I don't think Paul would necessarily go God himself. After all, Paul was a Pharisee Jew who would still believe, absolutely, not in the later church concept, the developing church concept of Trinity, because he would believe in one God but he would believe that Jesus was in some way an agent of God and that he has been called to share the good news to the Gentiles of this. The simplest of biographies is what Paul gives us. Jesus was born the natural way. Jesus is a descendant of David. God raised him from the dead and therefore the good news is given. If you could sum up your life in three sentences, what it all means, what it all is to be understood, what lens to use it in, what would you say? What would others describe your biography as in three statements or less? 
would it be a full expression of life or would some things be necessarily left out? Whatever the origin story is, and we'll continue this during this week of looking at how the story gets increasingly elaborated upon through the Gospels, which are actually written some 20 years after the book, the letter to the churches of Rome and all of other of Paul's letters. Paul's letters are our earliest documents in the New Testament. We will examine as they develop more fully the biography of Jesus, where clearly in this stage, the stories of Jesus are being collected and retold and there are still eyewitnesses who can give live testimony, think open mic night in the first century, about this descendant of David, who is the Son of God. And by declaring this descendant of David, the Son of God, we're also telling others who isn't the Son of God, who keeps talking like he is. Let us pray. Gracious God, some biographies are short and swift and to the point. We thank you for your testimony, the very basics of facts that you arrived as all humans arrive that you are a descendant of David through Jesus Christ, that you claim David's throne and authority, and that you, through the resurrection, have revealed your divine status. Help us, we pray, in our lives, in our family stories, that we may be pointing to your story as part of ours. Amen. Blessings to you, Nora's this day, and always, goodbye.